whatever things are popping around the homestead. Mm -hmm. It's that time of the year where it's boom, boom, boom. It's, it's been popping for a few weeks. popping, man. Sunflowers, I'm doing my succession planting with sunflowers, and I tell you, I'm getting in touch with my inner self. I am just blown away this year with these sunflowers. Now, these right here, I almost didn't do anything to them besides plant them. I, I just didn't tend to them whatsoever. They come up, they didn't get as tall as they normally do. They made a really nice bloom. And I'll be honest with you, I believe the more... You don't take care of them, I believe the better they are sometimes on these sunflowers. It's just uh, it's amazing to me. That's pro-cut orange. Pro-cut orange, and it makes a smaller flower when you don't love them as much. But hey, that's kind of what I like. Yeah. Yeah, they, you put them in a small jar, you don't have to have a big old container for and them. And I've been giving these things away to some of these ladies around church. I'm a, I'm a superstar now. Yeah, yeah. flower superstar. Hug my neck. Keep go, Greg. So thank you so much. I'm just mm. superstar. And Bless your heart. If you need to kick it up a little bit in your community, this is the way to do. Right or, or in your love life. Or your love life, either one. Um, I'm with you on the... Now, if you was if you had your flat, you was growing of zinnias and other kind of flowers and you had a little extra space, you could transplant these things. But planting with a garden cedar so much quicker and uh um, yep. if you see i had a video come out on wednesday and i know you 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 touting your flower but watch my video and you'll see what i got going on flower wise well, now keep in mind this is probably my third if not my fourth crop of sunflowers this year yeah and speaking of flowers i, I did want to i'm not trying to one up you so this is a little different deal here now you could put certainly put these in a vase. This would make a nice compliment if you was wanting to make like a a montage, if you would. So this here is called Ageratum. And uh never grown this before, but this was recommended to us by Lisa, our cut flower expert, and uh, she said certainly a variety we should carry. So we carried it. I started these from transplants. Um we've got them in the little pelleted seed so the easier to plant in the tray. And as far as ground cover and vegetation and really, uh, you know, blocking out the weeds and stuff, this right here, some good stuff. Makes some really dense vegetation. And those little tiny, I don't know if they're called mason bees or what they're called, but you know, the little tiny bees, the native ones, all over this stuff. And if you watch my video, I got some good footage of that. And it got me thinking, you remember when Ben, the bee guy, was here. He was talking about how sunflowers, the ability of the bee to feed on it has to do with can they access it. And on these, I'm guessing that it's very accessible, and that's why them little bees love it. It's very shallow. Yeah. But uh, I'm going to have to work on that. In, in, normally, I don't like to grow anything I can't pronounce, and I'm going to have to. I like to grow some of that, but I'm going to have to work on pronouncing Well, the that. variety name is Blue Horizon. If you just want to call it Blue Horizon, Blue you can pronounce that. Yep. But if you want to sound fancy, you call it Adjuratum. Let's go with Blue Horizon. Yep. Anyway, let's say hey to everybody before right. we get too deep. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Row by Row Garden Show. Glad to have you with us tonight. Yes, we are. I'm Travis. And I'm Greg. And we've got a good show planned. We're going to do another tomato taste test a little later, talking about determinate tomatoes. Um, but now we're just talking about what's going on in the garden. Lots of flowers going on. Go check out that video that aired Wednesday if you haven't seen it already. Lots of good sunflowers, zinnias, cosmos, ageratum, all kind of good stuff. What else is going on? Well, I got zinnias coming. I, I cut zinnias last night, too. Zinnias are just wonderful. And I've got the same thing with them as I do with sunflowers. I'm bringing them along side to side. I'm just, I'm flower crazy this year. Flower crazy. You know how I am. I go hog wild on certain things. don't have just, any restraint. I don't have any restraints, and I'm going flower crazy this year. Um, I got the best pepper crop I've had in a long, long time. And um, this right here is what they call a purple bell pepper. And this is the Merlot variety we carry. They'll get a little bit bigger than this, but that's the biggest one I had on the vine currently. You, sometimes you get a little bit of green on, just depending on where the sun's hitting them or whatever. But the, you talk about pretty, these purple bell peppers are pretty. They're really good to eat. The, the uh, wall on them ain't quite as thick as a normal green bell pepper, but uh, Got a good little crop of these. I got about three plants of these that are just loaded down. And then the bayonet bell peppers, which is that hybrid variety yep. we carry. Um, 
I've been growing bell peppers many years, but that bayonet's the most productive I've carried thus far. Really? Um, I just picked them a few days ago, so I didn't have any big ones to bring, but I'll have to bring some to show you those. Well, you know, I think these taste tests we're doing is really important because it gives us an opportunity to evaluate some of these varieties that we're carrying. Let's recap just a little bit what happened last week on the, the way we scored some of these varieties. Yeah, because I did mess it up um, and incorrectly. <coughs> You got a little carried away. Recap there. the scores. Yeah. I was too carried away with my tricks. And so uh, I, I wrote them down. So let's go back to them. So the Sun Gold was your number one. <coughs> Excuse me. And I had to say by a long shot, it was it was number one. It had the most plot. It just the most flavor profile was it was just boom. Yeah. And I agree. Um, the, the Sun Gold is 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 many times noted out there not just by us but by several others as being one of the best tasting mm -hmm. cherokee purple old heirloom variety that everybody loves to grow and it, it does make a beautiful tomato come in at 4.1 which was slightly below the sun gold yeah but still pretty yep. good pretty good and jubilee the yellow tomato that uh we've grown for the first time this year mm -hmm. come in below that at 3.8 which is still a good score still a good score and the amish paste come below that at 3.2 now the amish paste is a wrong point. Yeah, two, two. Two it's a um it's a it's a um, it's a it's a roma tomato a lot of people use it for salsa now this is some salsa miss hall excuse me did yesterday and and she really likes to use this amish paste in these type of uh, concoctions whether it be salsa or spaghetti sauce or things like that got a little garlic in there too got a little garlic in there a lot of uh, a mixture there but the Amish paste, and I've grown other Roma varieties before, the Amish paste, as far as the Roma variety to me, came out pretty high this year. I, I really like that variety. It's a bigger tomato. It just it did well. Vines did well. It was nice disease resistant. It, it, it grew well for us. So I was proud of that. Yeah, I, I'm definitely a, a much bigger fan of that than the traditional yes. Romas we have grown yes. over the years. Yes. So as far as a, a sauce tomato or a salsa making tomato, mm. The Amish paste is yep. definitely uh, a go-to. And then the last one we here have... Mortgage Lifter. Mortgage Lifter come in at 2.9. A lot of people have raved about this. You can read it on forums left and right. A lot of people have raved about this Mortgage Lifter for years. It's my first year growing it and my first year trying it. I don't care for it. I think Jeff uh, agrees with me out there on that one right there. That it's just, it makes a big old tomato. It makes a big old tomato. It's different. It looks kind of hollish on the inside. I just, it just, it ain't for me. If you like it, more power to you. It's not one I'm gonna grow in. I just don't care for it. Yeah. Um, if you, if you compare that to that, is a, yeah. a big big difference. Big big there. difference. So yeah. those were our indeterminates, and uh, today we're going to talk about the determinate variety. So we had um, three determinate hybrid disease resistant tomatoes that we carried this year. We had the um, Bella Rosa, which is one that we've grown for a while. Yes. We had the Brickyard and the Mountain Glory. Yep. So it was our first year with the Brickyard and the Mountain Glory, but both of those came highly recommended. Yeah, it's probably been 10 years ago. I did an extensive test run on some varieties back then. I used Red Bounty. I had several out there that I did side by side comparison back then. And I think that might have been even before we was in the Hall's Tool business. And the one that came out on top then was Bella Rosa. And that's the reason I've been growing the Bella Rosa years. But we thought it was time to try some of these other varieties and see how things came out. And it was very interesting. Very interesting. So before we get into the taste test, I kind of want to talk about just the, the plants and, and the growth and what seemed to be more hardier. And what was interesting to me is in different spots where I saw these three planted side by side, I saw some different results, which kind of, uh, I'll elaborate on kind of my hypothesis with that. So at, at my house, where I have almost more commercial farming than you have around here, I mean, it it's surrounds my entire property. Um, really heavy pest and disease pressure. Um, at my house, the Bella Rosa and the Brickyard performed the best. Uh, in my heavy disease pressure area, the Mountain Glory seemed a little less hardy. Now, I wouldn't say they were less productive. Productivity-wise, um, the, the plants seemed to be pretty equal, but I lost less uh, of the Brickyard and Bella rosa than i did of the mountain glory mm -hmm. early mm -hmm. so um and i between the bella rosa and the brickyard i really couldn't 
maybe the Bella Rosa was a little bit, but it, it was hard to tell. But those two are about tit for tat, and then the, the Mountain Glory seemed a little less hardy at my house. Okay, so let me let me run it over. Let me summarize what we're seeing. <laughs> So I did the same thing. I had Bella Rosa, Brickyard, and Mount Glory. The Bella Rosa and the Brickyard, as far as growth habit, was pretty similar. The Brickyard might have edged it out a little bit. The Brickyard, in my opinion, probably has a little bit more disease resistant than the Bella Rosa does. It was very little difference, but if I had to give it to one of the two, I'd say the vigor on the, the Brickyard was a little bit higher than the Bella Rosa. And it does, we've noted that, it does have the most comprehensive package of the three. Now, let's go back a minute here. We had something very unusual happen in the latter part of May that may have skewed our results a little bit. We had three or four days of very high, intense heat that run through here. We had a heat spell to come here, and we had some 100-degree days, which we normally don't in that latter part of May that may have skewed our results just a little bit on that Mountain Glory. And that's where I'm headed with this. The Mountain Glory didn't, didn't grow off as well as the other two did to me. And I think the reason is it was developed in North Carolina and I've done some research on this. If I was in a Northern climate, I would definitely probably grow the Mountain Glory is more, uh, it does better in those Northern climates than the Brickyard and the Bella Rosa does better in the Southern climates. The further south I got, the higher the disease pressure I got, I would go with the brickyard. The further north I would go, I would probably tend and I would definitely try the Mount Glory because I think that Mount Glory is going to outperform in a cooler climate than what it is here. And to, to throw a little bit of a wrench in what you said there, so at my consultant farm, which is south of here, it's warmer there, you know, we're, it's an hour south of here, so, um, but they don't have any commercial agriculture around them. Um, you know, it's just wooded areas and, and cleared areas, no commercial agriculture, about 10 minutes from town. And at their place, we did, we did the side-by-side -side comparison and the Mountain Glory plants just blew the other ones out of the water. Wow. Which... Well, you know, you go back and you said that they didn't have the pressure we did here. Right, they right. They didn't have the disease pressure. Right. Here's the takeaway. There was a little bit of difference in, in the growth habit of all three of these. But you need to try and see what works in your area because what works in your area may not work in my area and vice versa. We can only give you what worked for us. But that by no means should you take that into account and, and drill that down and plant that variety. Try a couple of them and see which one works best for you. We can make recommendations, but you definitely mm -hmm. got to try and see what works best for you because disease pressure and all that has a huge impact on which variety is going to outperform the other. And I would certainly grow all three again, even though I lost a couple of my Mountain Glory plants earlier, they ended up producing really well yep. for me. Uh, so I would not I would not, you know, throw away, and I, I certainly plan on us carrying all three varieties. So let's get down to the meat and potatoes of this. Meat Which potatoes. Which one of them tastes best? We didn't run down the growth habitat and how hardy they are and the vigor and all that. Let's see which one tastes the best. Okay, okay. It's time. It's time? Yep. Who's, uh, it's uh, your time. Oh, it's my time. It's okay. your time. Okay. I'm the guinea pig today. You're the guinea pig today. Uh-oh, this, this ain't going to be good. I got a feeling. All right. All right. So you can't see nothing, I'm assuming. Nope, can't see anything. Okay. So... <clears throat> I hope I'm looking at the camera. You are doing good. You okay. are doing really good. We, I got a fork this week instead of uh, toothpicks. Toothpicks, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of help you out a little bit here. Can I feed myself, or are you gonna Absolute, feed? Absolutely. Well, uh, yeah, you can feed yourself. Okay, here we go. Number one. Okay. Well, that's a big old piece. Yep. Well, I did. I want to give you. Uh, I want you to get that full impact of it. That's a pretty good one there. That's got some, it's acidic, but it's not very acidic. That's kind of what's, uh, you know, it tastes like a quintessential tomato sandwich, tomato, good flavor to it. You got that little bit of acidity there. Um, very kind of complex, a little sweetness to it. Um, and, and, and since we're just comparing these, I don't, have anything to kind of baseline it but with exception like a store-bought tomato but uh oh yeah i'll say on that one i'll go a 3.9 okay so you're going 3.9 on this one mm -hmm. and show hold on just me okay that variety right there is the 
And our scale here is from one, one to five. five. Yeah. Okay. Okay, our next one here. Now I will say when I when I took these out and uh, I made sure they was all good and right. So it wouldn't okay. be fair to hold them in. <laughs> It wouldn't be fair for you to be tasting one that wasn't as ripe as the other. So they're as equally ripe as, equally as we as can ripe. get it. Yeah. You, okay. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. All right. All right. Now that one there is, is less acidic. Less acidic than the first one but it had more of a fruity kind of flavor to it. Um, not, not as intense as say the Sun Gold or the Jubilee, but it had more of a, uh, kind of that, that fruity flavor to it. Less acidic. Um, more of a floral. That, it, it just made, that yeah. kind of made your mouth water. Just kind of, uh, I'll bump that. I'll say that one was a little better than the first one. I'll, I'll give that one a, a, a 4.1. 4.1, okay. All right, now our last one here. Okay, you just hold the plate, and I'm gonna fix you up here. Hold a minute, I got to get the shaker out. Okay. <laughs> okay, you got it? Yeah, I okay, got it. Okay, good. I'll put the extra one on there, because I know that may want to eat a little bit of that. Uh, that one there was a little more, it was less complex than the first two, a little more plain. Still a great tomato, but um, didn't just pop in your mouth like the first two did. So um, on that one, I would say a, a 3.5. 3.5. Okay. All right. All right, we're good. Interesting, very interesting right there. So what we did is we tasted three of these tomatoes and uh, the Bella Rosa came out on top with a 4.1. Really? Mm -hmm. Really? Bella Rosa was your favorite tomato. The Brickyard was number two at 3.9. Okay. And the Mountain Glory was at 3.5. Hmm. So not a lot of difference there. I mean, even with the 3.5, 4.1, all that. But they was, you I mean, you could tell the difference. So we didn't yeah, need yeah. to note that. Right. So the Bella Rosa still comes out on top. Brickyard number two, and then the Mount Glory number three. And, and the, you know, Bellar even on when we compared it to like the, the Tasty Lee, the Amelia, all those ones we tested way back in the day, uh, it came on top then. It's just, uh, that Bella Rosa is uh, it's a good one. Um, you know, everybody's got their own one they like and they suggest, but I, I can promise you, if you grow that Bella Rosa, you're going to be really impressed with the productivity and the taste of, and you can, grow, if you live, you know, anywhere relatively south, you can grow them in the fall too. You know, I've, I've been around tomatoes for quite a while now. Yeah. And even the old heirloom varieties, the Bella Rosa to me stacks up with my taste just as well as the heirlooms. That's, that's interesting. Um, glad we did that right yep. there. And, um, glad there was only three there. I didn't have any surprises. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we're going to get into some, um, questions from last week's show yep. and as always put if you have any questions during the show put those in the comments we'll be glad to answer them on next week's show if we answer your question on the show send us an email to cussserve at hosstools.com and we'll be glad to send you a nice little prize question number one comes from christopher patterson do you guys post your planning schedule i'm in the same growing zone with you i would like to be growing all year but feel lost when planting when to go in the ground or when to start in the greenhouse. All right, Christopher. So, a couple things here. Um, if you follow our channel and watch our videos kind of when they come out, you'll be pretty in tune with what we're doing. We don't do much in the garden that we don't film. Wouldn't you say that's right? Yeah. Um, and we don't shoot our videos no more than usually one or two weeks ahead of time, which is usually in the right window there. So if you watch our channel, watch the show, you should be pretty up to date with that. Now, with that being said, do I wish we had some kind of uh, digital infographic on our site, stuff like that? Yes, but 
then again, it's hard to do that just for one area and everybody else, you know, is going to have a different planting time. So with that being said, probably one of the better resources we have is this thing right here called a garden planner. And I will send you one of these once you send us your address um, to that. So what you do is it's got a spring side and it's got a fall side. So on the spring side, you line it up to that red line. You line it up with your what? last frost date. And on the fall side, you line it up with your first frost date. And it gives you planting recommendations for all these crops. Now, in general, with these kind of garden planters, they tend to play it on the safe side of things. And we like to kind of float the boundaries a little bit. So, you know, something like this, in addition to keeping up with our channel, kind of keep you, give you an idea. And I tell this to everybody all the time who asks me, can I plant this now? Can I plant this now? If you got some room, go for it. Just try it. You know, we, that's how we figured out all what that's we did. That's the reason I figured out what you couldn't do a lot of times because I tried it and figured out what, you, what didn't work. So Yeah, and, and every year's different. Some years I can get away with planting um, lettuce in late September. Some years it's just too hot Our still. average frost date here is November 20th. I mean, a couple of years ago, we went on into January before we had our first frost date. That changes things up a little bit. It does. It certainly does. All right, and then our last question here is from Home Field Honey and Produce. And uh, they want to know, do I still have enough time to grow these sunflowers in Ohio? Well, I don't know exactly what part of Ohio they're in. I try to look at them, I can't find it. But what I did is I went and picked out middle Ohio, which, which is, is Columbus. Okay. Columbus, Ohio. So let's just say that's middle Ohio because it's pretty close. South of Cleveland, north of Dayton. Yes. Okay. And I looked at it last frost, or excuse me, the first frost date is October 9th, normally speaking. Mm-hmm. And we got a 60 day maturity on pro cut sunflowers. So you back that off as long as you get those sunflowers in by the 1st of August, that would give you August, September, you're in good shape. And this time of year, your heat units is gonna bump that maturity date yep. up a little bit. Yep. You can be safe though getting them in. If you're in Ohio, I think you can be safe getting them in by the 1st of August. So you got plenty of time. You got well over plenty a month. Time you can take advantage of it and I would highly suggest you take advantage of it because it will make your day and uh that's like I said at the end of my flower video on Wednesday um no matter what your growing zone is unless you're up in the arctic circle somewhere still plenty of time to get any of these zinnia sunflowers adjuratum cosmos any of those in the ground mm -hmm. and uh really pop the garden there yep. all right so um that is going to do it for this yep. week and Let's wrap um, it up a little nice tomato taste test there. Tell us what you think. We'd love to hear in the comments, those of you that tried all three or tried one or two, what you thought of these determinate tomato varieties, which was your favorite. And which, and which grew best in your growing area. That's really important to us. Yeah, yeah. So we can kind of, you know, get some determination on, on what areas others thrive in. So yep. thanks for watching. Hit that like button. Hit that share button. Give us a comment. And we will see you guys next week. Thank you.